Hello, I'm Rianne. Uh, I've managed to call a Professor Reid from Southampton University. Um, I'm going to ask him a few questions about vaccines, so hopefully you'll be able to answer those questions. I'll try my best. So, firstly, I'd like to know, what are vaccines? Um, well, in general, um, uh, vaccines are um, derived from bugs, viruses or bacteria, and uh, we can give them to people either by mouth or, or by injection, and they mimic uh, the bugs that they're derived from, so that the body thinks it's being infected by them, but it actually isn't. Uh, so that's how they work, interesting. Um, I've heard that they're they can be quite dangerous, that they're associated with lots of side effects and things. Well, not at all, not in general. I mean, obviously any medicine uh, can have its side effects, um, but um, uh, it's, it's really quite rare for any serious side effects to occur with vaccines. For example, um, out of millions of vaccines we give to babies in this country, we, we hardly see any serious side effects occurring. Okay. I've also heard uh, a term, I think it's herd immunity, mm. and that was explained to me that you know I, I don't need to worry because my friends have all had vaccines. Is that something you would agree with? So, I know. Well, herd immunity is when you've uh, it occurs when when you've given so many people the vaccine that the bug has nowhere to go. Right. So what happens then is that the bug dies out in the population. Um, but obviously it does rely on sufficient numbers of people being vaccinated so that the bug really doesn't have anywhere to go. If you don't manage to achieve that, then what happens is the bug can then infiltrate the population and you get emergence of the disease, again, that you're trying to protect from. A good example of that would be um, measles, yeah. where um, people stopped giving their babies the MMR vaccine. And whereas before, most of the population were adequately covered. This uh, recently, there's been a chink, so that a small number of people are, aren't immune anymore. And then we've seen emergence of measles, you know, I I in the population, which of course is an extremely dangerous disease. So, um, will vaccine will a vaccine weaken my immune system? Well, actually, no, it'll do, it'll do the opposite. It strengthens it. it. It increases the exposure of the immune system to, to molecules derived from, uh, from, from the bugs. So it doesn't do anything at all to weaken the immune system. I've also heard that it's actually, in some respects, better to get the disease rather than um, have the vaccine itself. I mean, well, you wouldn't say that if you were living in the Middle Ages and, you know, you got yeah. things like diphtheria and tetanus. Um, because these diseases, when they occur in nature, are really awful diseases. You see, as a population, we've actually forgotten how mm. awful it is to have real measles, to have real mumps, to have real tetanus and diphtheria. And these used to kill people, mm. kill children. Uh, we don't see that anymore, and it's because the population uh, is, is vaccinated. So, no, it's not better to have the wild disease than it is to have the vaccine. The vaccine is... I mean, I mean, our, our brilliant history of, of vaccinating the public uh, against these diseases has just removed a real scourge, you know, from the population. I've also heard that um, getting the disease as an adult is far worse than getting it as a as a child. Does the same thing apply to vaccines? Is are you more likely to develop side effects, for example, if you're an adult? Or? No, no. It is true that there are some diseases which in nature are worse when you're older. I mean, such, such as glandular fever, such, um, uh, such as chicken pox. Um, but it's not true for the vaccines. I mean, you don't get more side effects from the vaccine when you're older than when you're, uh, you're a baby at all. Because, uh, you know, because the immune system... Obviously, it's different. The immune system of a baby is different to the immune system of an adult. But because these vaccines are not, they're not, they're not the, the actual disease, they're a part of the disease or they're a modified bug, um, then they, they don't elicit a, a particularly strong effect in adults compared to, to, to babies. It's the same. Okay. So you, you're effectively telling me that it, I won't develop the disease if I, if I, a milder form of the disease if I get the vaccine. Well, actually, no, there are some vaccines, I mean, to be fair, that are, um, that, that where we have taken the virus or the bug and we've weakened it severely, all right, that's called a live vaccine. 
It can't cause the full-blown disease, but it may give some very minor symptoms. A good example would be the yellow fever vaccine, where that's a, a, a weakened virus. And when we give it to people, we sometimes do see a bit of fever, but it's a lot better having that little bit of fever than it is having full-blown yellow fever. Obviously, those vaccines you can give to the general population because they're strong and they can, they, they can withstand it. But if you gave it to people with an, a weakened immune system, for example, people with cancer or something, then of course, those vaccines can cause illness. But in the main, in most of the population, that's not a major problem. So how do vaccines work? by being um, derived from the bug that you're trying to protect against. So they can either work because you've taken molecules from the bug or you've taken the bug and in the factory you've weakened it by either heating it or changing it chemically. And when we give them to somebody, either by mouth or by injecting them, the immune system recognizes that thing that's been put into the body is, is foreign to the body. And in, in, in recognizing it, it then makes the immune system, the cells of the immune system, create either molecules called antibodies that can fight against the bug, or by expanding the number of uh, immune cells, white cells, that can specifically recognize that bug. So that the next time you see the wild infection, um, you're already armed with either the molecules, the antibodies, or with the cells, the white cells, that can specifically recognize the bug. And it makes your response, the next time you see the real thing, very much more rapid and efficient than it would have been otherwise. Why do I need to know about vaccines? Haven't I had them all as a baby? Well, yes, you did have them as a baby, but many vaccines don't give you immunity that, that lasts all of your life. So some of them you have to have a booster later in life. All right? Some of the vaccines can't be given to babies and have to be given to, 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 to older people. Um, and some of the vaccines uh, are for diseases that mainly only occur in older people. So um, the, the vaccines that we give to the babies are, are chiefly the ones that the babies need to be protected against in young life, such as measles, rubella, uh, diphtheria, tetanus. Uh, and meningitis, and then as you go, as you become an older child, there are there are some diseases that remain uh, uh, that, that, that are more relevant at that age group, such as uh, such as meningitis, where we have to give a booster vaccine, and some vaccines then die out, and we have to give a booster vaccine, such as such as tetanus or diphtheria. So we have to boost your immunity when you're older. Um, so. Any vaccine issues that are specifically relevant to teenagers? Well, yes, there are. I mean, uh, two good examples are mumps and measles. Um, when people stopped having vaccines for mumps and uh, some of the population became vulnerable to that viral infection, we started to see a lot of mumps infection in, in young students occurring in outbreaks. And that, when you catch that infection as an older person, as an adolescent, that can be quite a severe disease and result in long-standing side effects. So it's really important to be boosted for mumps vaccines. Likewise, we've seen a burst in measles infection, and that's a really nasty lung infection that can be quite severe when you're older. And we've started to see that, um, that virus emerging as well. Uh, so again, we're, we are concerned that you know, all of our adolescent population are, are vaccinated, particularly with the MMR and uh, uh, other vaccines such as meningitis. Um, thank you very much for your time. I was very, very informative. Thank you.